Hello, beautiful people. Here I am with the Cosmic Climate for the week of January 30th through February 5th. I am recording this on Tuesday, January 31st, and it's already been a week, <laughs> two days into the week, and it's already been a week. I'm wondering if you all are feeling this. Um, there's a lot of intensity in the air at the moment, a lot of electricity, um, and I'll talk about this in a second, but I do want to share that on this coming Thursday, February 2nd, I am going to be doing a live stream here on YouTube. This is an Ask Me Anything live stream. So ask me any of your questions regarding astrology, tarot, um, spirituality, anything personal, whatever it is you want to ask, um, whatever comes forth, I will be happy to answer it unless it's something super, super private. And then, you know, obviously <laughs> I probably won't... Um, answer that, but maybe I will. So who knows, but the live stream is again on February 2nd at 7 PM Eastern time. And I just want to test out the live, you know, experience here on YouTube. I've done lives with other creators, but I would like to try out my own because I do plan on doing a live stream tutorial on annual perfections and more so with just sharing how I um, work with the annual perfection timing technique, more so in the sense of how I appease my the planet or the God or the Lord that is activated for that year. So this year for me, um, the Lord of the year or annually, annual perfected uh, planet is Saturn for me. So that's a very like the most pretty much the most dominant planet in my chart aside from Venus. So I'm going to share and walk you all through, you know, how I get really practical with the annual perfection. Like I really bring it into like a real world experience, I guess you could say. And also I bring in that ancient uh, astrology aspect of, okay, appeasing the God. How do I appease Saturn? Because when a planet is activate it, you know, for that annual perfection, essentially it is whatever it promises in your chart, whatever condition it is within your chart is, is what it's going to really begin to bring to life, um, for that year. And that will be the lessons and the experiences that you will experience. So, um, the live stream is essentially practice for going live on YouTube. So if I have any challenges, I can address it moving forward and hopefully not have to do that while I do the tutorial. So I really hope that you will join me on February 2nd at 7 p.m. Eastern time. All right, so this week we began the week January 30th with a waxing gibbous moon in Gemini. And we'll actually start it and Taurus, but then very quickly early in the morning, it then moved in, the moon moved into um, Gemini. And that was really intense. Um, I know some of you all reached out to me sharing your experience. I did a, a post or a reel on my Instagram about it because I had, I was having actually a really good day. I was, well, I was really moody and emotional and in my head, but I, you know, was very proactive. I was like, let me get out of the house. It was really nice here. I went to a local plant nursery and just walked around with some plants with my daughter. And I, on the way there, I was listening to um, a Tara mantra, one of the songs that I really like. that's just really uplifting, high vibe music. I call it temple music. So by the time I got home, I was just like, it was like 65 degrees here. Um, and so I was just like in a really, really good space. It was sunny and everything. And then I had a conversation and it was like a really good conversation, but it took a turn just off of like one or two like comments or a subject politics, right? Brought up and I got really passionate and really intense and I was really happy because I was able to ground myself and not take it to the extreme like I would in the past. And same thing with the person I was talking to. And so then um, 
And then he mentioned, he was like, what is going on today? Like, is there something going on in the astrology? And I hadn't even done the notes for cosmic climate. So I wasn't really paying attention. You know, I looked at the moon. I knew the moon was in Gemini, but I didn't really put two and two together that, oh, the moon in Gemini with Mars. And it's also, again, in the space where it will occult Mars or they're very close, right? If you're in the a particular um a particular region, mostly in, um, you know, the Southern United States, South America. And I think, um, oh, I can't remember in the Caribbean and maybe a few other places you could see it. Um, but being that it's in the South of the States, you know, and I am pretty much technically in a Southern state, um, I'm in Maryland. So it's, it wasn't visible here, but still, I mean, it's close enough, right? We felt it, right? We felt it energetically is the point. <laughs> I do think it's stronger, has a stronger effect, um, or there is some symbolism when you can see it, um, as opposed to when you're not, um, when you don't see it. So I, I'll just leave that there for you. But yeah, so there was definitely some intensity and there was just like a rolling through all the emotions. I was feeling very sexual. I was feeling very, you know, inspired, passionate, anxious, depressed, anger, frustrated, <laughs> like everything. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. And by the end of the day, you know, I'm laying in bed. And again, I'm, I'm listening to, um, you know, I thought in my head, I'm like, I tend to go back to my old videos, which I shared one on um, Instagram. I think it was like the day or so before. And it was a video in which I, I recorded it like four or five years ago. And I was talking about ascension and the spiral of life and how we had these highs and lows and that you can follow that path along just like even the geometry of the spiral of life and like the expansion coming from the one point and expanding on this continuous in this continual spiral or loop. Right. Um, but it's a expanding loop, I guess you could say. And so I keep watching my old videos and reading things that I've written in the past. And there was just this period again with 2018, even specifically where I was just like tapped in and very, even though I know myself, like I was definitely face to face with imposter syndrome and things of that nature, but I was so inspired and excited to share that I didn't even care. So there was a level of confidence there. And so um, I always tend to, you know, or lately I've been reflecting like, what was I doing and why am I not feeling that again? And so last night that came in my mind, I was like, what was I doing you know, back then, or what did I miss doing? And I just happened to be scrolling on my, in my iTunes, laying down, looking for meditation music. And I went back to um, a meditation um, track that um, is just singing bowls, but it's very like deep and very resonant. Just, I don't know what it is. It's really powerful. And every time I listen to it, which I think it's about 35, 45 minutes long, I like I'm gone. Like I I'm out of it. <laughs> I like astral travel. I have experiences. And so last night I actually connected, um, with my divine self with Urania, um, in the astral plane and as well as Yeshua, which is one of my guides. And I haven't really like, I've connected with him here and there, but I haven't seen him like that since before I was pregnant, which my daughter's three now. And it was just very powerful and he didn't come through until the end. And it was like, I was touching, you know, just my body, not in a sexual way, just, but more like the healing hands. And, and Urania was like, you know, your hands are healing. And it was like, touch these places that are, you know, very tense or you feel that's blocked. And really it was like my solar plexus region. And then when I like, right as the song was ending, right as I was like waking up and coming out of it like they came together first Urania, like basically she came and merged with that solar plexus. And then Yeshua came behind her and merged with the solar plexus. And it was just like this knowingness of it's in within me, it's inside me. It is a part of me. All of this is a part of me. So the point of sharing that is it is one, it's really this week. It, it's so loud to ask for help and to connect with your spirit guides, with your higher self, with your ancestors, whoever it is that you commune with, definitely ask for guidance this week. And what's really also important as we're coming up to the full moon is that energy 
of, or that, uh, that feeling, that embodiment of your inner knowingness or connecting to the inner knowingness, strengthening that, um, connecting to your authenticity, to your truth, embodying that, um, yeah, that or inner strength is where I'm going for, but all of the solar plexus, um, region there, that is really, really powerful and really, really strong right now. And connecting with that and with your guides is going to be really helpful this week. So this week is really, there's a lot of change. There is a lot of just, it's a bit, a major shift, pretty much a major clearing. And right now we know that all planets are in direct motion. And it's really interesting because I was looking at the you know, the astrology of this week. And I was like, well, there's not really a lot going on. You know, obviously there's things going on with the moon. The moon is interacting with the planets. But as far as like what we've been used to, I was like up until like the weekend, it's, you know, it seems like pretty chill aside from, of course, moon and Mars. Well, in this like chill space, there is a lot of one anticipation but then also it's like this restless energy. I don't know if you all have been feeling it, but I've definitely been feeling a lot of restlessness. And also within this space, it is this energy of things coming up to the surface. Like It's like there is an intent here of the spaciousness of like not a lot going on because when there's not a lot of big things happening, we tend to notice the subtle energies and that's really coming up to the surface. So every little thing, you know, when you're having anxiety, when you're worried about something, it's like every little thing that is that associated with that, that worry or something that's like, oh, well this, you know, in my case, it's like, oh, when it comes to like feeling out of balance, feeling, you know, unwell, it's like this little thing, you know, like, oh, I have a cough or, oh, like, you know, I have a headache or, you know, like I'm, I'm really tired. It's like, what does this mean? And so it's like every little single thing is heightened right now. And that seems very intentional in the sense of it's the little things that are giving us an idea of what's going on underneath the surface. And I guarantee you these little things and you have an awareness of where it's coming from, like the limiting beliefs, the fixed beliefs, right? The fixed consciousness, the fixed thought patterns and the narratives that are coming through and, and you know, with these planets in direct motion especially with Mars um, just coming out as retrograde cycle and Uranus as well as Mercury. So they're freshly, they just freshly came out of that reflection mode. And so that experience and what was coming up is still, it's still kind of sensitive and it's still, yeah, it's still there in our present awareness. And there is like this week just feels like there is this, this release that's coming forth. Um, and so also this week on, I believe it's either February 1st or February 2nd. Um, I don't have the exact date, but it's always around that time is the uh, cross quarter day of in bulk or also known as candle moss. And this is essentially the, in the Northern hemisphere, right? This is winter's peak. This is the halfway point between winter and spring. If you're in the Southern hemisphere, it's like the peak of summer, halfway between um, summer and fall. But on a global perspective, this is pretty much, we're almost at the end of the you know astrological year. So that zero degrees Aries marks the Eastern point of um, our perspective of the, of the sun rising in the East, right? This is the Eastern point of, or the sun at the Eastern point from our perspective here on earth. I hope that makes sense. Um, and so that is, you know, the time of Easter, that's the time of the spring equinox. This is the, um, the, or the equinox is the time where the sun essentially is being reborn because it's reaching that equal part, right? That equinox zero degrees East and we all know like rise when the sun, the planets, you know, when the the stars, the the constellations and will not rise in the east, that's them, that's like a new beginning, right? That dawning. And so the sun is coming up to a dawning of a this would this honestly should probably be the beginning of the new year. And so with that said, this little period, this 
last quarter of this astrological year is very significant because a lot of you know that March and into April, like there's going to be a lot of changes happening. And that's when momentum is really going to pick up. And it's like stepping into really, I wanted to say a new world. That's like definitely, definitely probably, um, <laughs> exaggerating a bit, but like fresh energy, essentially, we're definitely making a big shift. And so this point in time really, really matters. And so with the in bulk, this marking of in bulk, this cross quarter day, there is that focus of illumination and focus of more light coming through, even though we're in this period of we're on the releasing end, we're stepping into a period where we're coming into or soon to come into the light and again, the rising of the sun. So this is the birth of divine intelligence. And so we're going through a great like shedding at this period um, and shift as we begin to move into, you know, the equinox time and I'm way ahead of myself. So I definitely want to bring it back into the now and to this week. So um with this shift, with the illumination, really that brings to light Uranus. And this is why I'm saying there's a lot of energy in the air. There's a lot of anticipation. And this is when Uranus, when Uranus is activated, it definitely shocks the system. There's sudden change. I always see Uranus interactions as a tower moment. And so it's really interesting because for the Oracle this week, we receive the fault line, which... A lot of you really, a lot of you that, you know, follow me on Instagram and have already seen this resonated with this energy. And it was funny because when I saw this card, it pretty much came out right away as I was shuffling and I looked at it and I feel like I've pulled this card before just personally. And then I read the interpretation and I was just like, no, I don't have time for this. Like really, you know? And I was like, I just, I, I feel good. I, I feel good. I don't want to like deal with whatever, whatever this is. I don't want it. <laughs> and, but in true authenticity, um, I, of course, I was like, I'm going to sit with this. I'm not going to put it back in the deck. This is for the collective. This is not a personal thing. It's obviously a message that is very, powerful and resonant for us at this time. And what really came through, I don't have the interpretation right now, but um, do I have the book down here? Nope. But what came through essentially is that this is, you basically, you can't ignore the things that you don't like, the separation, the fracture, like what's not working, right? The split, the splitting, the duality. And, and saying again, there is duality. And I felt like this was definitely a message for the spiritual community, just the way I felt in my body and my response to this. I felt like I needed to share that. I felt that that was important because, you know, there's a lot coming up collectively. There's a lot that's been coming up that was beneath the surface. And that's really been on the surface, but a lot of us have just been like, you know, it's like, what can we do feeling helpless and just we're really focused on our own personal and spiritual development, which is great. But then we also want to take time to even just simply reaching out to someone else or just sharing and just really what it comes to at the end of the day as well is like really standing in your own personal power and honoring your creative gifts, honoring your purpose, whatever that looks like. And if you don't know, just showing up every day and doing what inspires you if you can. And also, yeah, just taking it slow and steady, which is really the phrase, the name of the game at this point. And so the fault line is that fracture. Um, and that I've really been experiencing this coming up where it's like, we can't ignore these fragmented parts of ourselves, of are, you know, are the collective of the planets. And yeah, it's like, how do we, and just looking at this card, I'm like, oh, I just want to pour some water through this. Like, it's just so dry and just like breaking apart. And, you know, one of the quotes um, that I, um, as far as people sharing their responses was that um, like, basically the light, there's a crack within everything 
and that's how the light comes out or that's how the light gets out. I'm butchering this quote, but like, I just really, I felt that. And I was like, yes, that, that is how, how the light is able to come through. Right. If you have all of this together and this just feels like your honest energy as well. Um, but yeah, if you have this solid ground and it's like, nothing can get out, there's no change. This is like breaking apart because the foundation isn't solid. Um, and there's, you know, again, uh, there are so many perspectives on this and I really enjoyed, you know, the people that shared their perspective on my Instagram story about, you know, just how that resonated for them, because pretty much everything that, you know, was shared, I was like, oh, I feel that I resonate with that. So then the second card was the prayer and the prayer is essentially, um, I know the the interpretation mentioned about what is prayer to you. What is it? I think, what does it like look like? Um, what this came, came for me just in my own intuitive, um, my intuition is that this is like your spirit guides, again, your ancestors, the divine reminding you to ask for help. You can always ask for help. Do not forget to ask for help. You don't have to do it all on your own. And it doesn't even just have to be asking them for help. It could be reaching out and asking someone else, right? And so again, that connection, that engagement is really important. And so with the sun, we're in Aquarius, winter Aquarius season. So I want to bring it back to that Aquarius intention of, you know, the fixed consciousness and really being present with those fixed beliefs, those th fixed thoughts and the narratives that just play over and over again, that are just really feel, make you feel restricted and in prison within your own mind and your own reality. The intention here and the energy coming forth is breaking free of that, like really letting that go. And it's really, I've been over the past, like what, two or three days, I've been like, oh my gosh, I'm just so sick of this. Why is this coming up? Why can I just let it go? Why am I still thinking about it? You know, and every day I'm going to freaking meditate deeply and ask for help and get insight to, you know, that's how I'm working with this. And I've already gotten some insight come through last night. So I'm really, really happy about that. But so with this Aquarius energy, Right on February 3rd, we have um, the sun will square Uranus. And this is at 15 degrees of Aquarius and Taurus. And this is like the beginning of the break, right? This weekend is going, this, this weekend is the shift, right? And so um, the sun isn't really super strong because it's an Aquarius. So it's far away from its home. Like it doesn't have the resources that it needs. You know, it's there with Saturn. So Saturn can kind of help a bit. Um, but I feel more so with Saturn's placement, Saturn's like, okay, like I have these needs that need to be met. <laughs> so sun, you're going to work for me and you're going to help me with these, these, um, these goals here. And with Saturn, there's definitely this energy um, of... Where did I like write that? Oh, the Saturn is, yeah, again, at this point, it's it's at 26 degrees, or at least during the full moon. Saturn's at 26 degrees of Aquarius. And so it's on its way out of Aquarius, right? So it's like, okay, let's reflect back to 20, uh, 2020, December 2020, when, you know, Saturn moved into Aquarius. And it had that even better, even more so, it had that that great conjunction with Jupiter, right? Um, so we all know what happened <laughs> globally, but what happened for you personally um, and maybe even in your local environments, right? So reflect back to that and see if anything comes forth, see if there's a connection of what's coming up right now. And me just saying that, like I, I wrote that down, but it didn't just click. And so just saying that just now, and I'm just like, oh, cause it was on my, that um, Saturn and Jupiter Conjunction was at zero, de zero degrees of Aquarius, right on my sun at zero degrees of Aquarius. Pluto is going to hit zero degrees of Aquarius. So that is going to be a whole thing. Um, so if you have any planets um, at zero degrees of the fixed sign, Aquarius, um, Taurus, Leo, and Scorpio, then you're probably going to really feel um, this energy pretty strongly um, or definitely things coming back up. So yeah, Saturn's like, okay, I am wanting to really release these limiting beliefs so that I can move forward and create the structure 
really bring this vision that I have for the future, right? Whether it's my own personal future, future of my family or future of community, bringing that into reality, I need to really release, you know, I, I need to complete this lesson and move forward because Saturn wants that mastery. Saturn is the one that will check you on your discipline, your devotion, your dedication and your patience, right? And endurance. <laughs> So now that Saturn is wrapping up this cycle here and Aquarius is actually going to move into Pisces. Um, and oh, did I write it down? I did not write it down. Um, but it's going to move into Pisces in April. So, or I'm sorry, it's going to move into Pisces in March. So very, very soon. And once Saturn moves into Pisces, that is going to really um, help us to dissolve the limiting beliefs, that's when we really can get to, get into that space where we're just like, you know, it's it's going to be kind of tricky with Neptune there and Saturn and Neptune and just Saturn trying to find its ground in, in Pisces. Um, but we got this. All right. And so with Sun squaring Uranus, that square again is, you know, it is a point of conflict, a point of coming to that edge or at your limit, you're at your capacity. It's like, I can't fucking do this anymore. Like I'm fucking done. Um, and that's how I feel personally. So, um, again, reflect back to 2018, because now at this point, Uranus is at 15 degrees of Taurus. It's been in Taurus since, um, mid-May of 2018, and it's going to move into Gemini in 2025 in July of 2025. So that's like two, two years, like a little over two years from now, it's going to, when it retrogrades in 2025, it's going to go back into um, Taurus for a short period and then fully into Gemini, but still like, we're going to get like kind of a preview in 2025. So we're really kind of um, starting to bring some things to full, to circle, um, bring some things full circle within this Uranus thing, or it should be clicking and you should be getting an idea of what um, foundations aren't stable at this point, what needs some restructuring, what um, is important for you, um, what do you hold valuable? And a lot of this, this Taurus energy too is really worthiness and self-reliance and resources, personal resources and security. And so, um, maybe, you know, go back to 2018 and reflect on that and see whatever you have going on in Taurus, that might, that will give you some insight um, in looking to the area of life that's ruled by Taurus. So moving forward on February 4th, we have Venus squaring Mars. And this is a bit of a little, bit of a different energy here, different vibe. Um, and it's interesting because Mars in this case is not at its full potential still. It's still moving a little slower, even though it's picking up speed. Venus kind of holds the power here because she is in her exaltation in Pisces. And when she's in Pisces, she just really wants to, she has a space where she can just really bring things into union, you know, bring all the feel good vibes, all like the, like, just the harmony, the the blissfulness, the pleasure, all of those things, right? Um, and so with Venus square Mars, it can it can be really good. It can be really dynamic in a creative way, depending on what you have going on and dependent depending on how open you are to the connection. But I think with Venus, Venus is the prayer. Venus is the energy that we're praying to because again, she's exalted. And, you know, she is there and or here to help us restore balance and to, again, heal these fragmented parts of ourselves, specifically what is or what happened with Mars and Gemini and where that is in your chart. Because Mars is, you know, does have this um, desire or ability to separate things, to sever and to cut. And so um, Venus is coming through and Venus can literally, her and Pisces can be the water that will allow for, you know, this, this energy just to nourish this energy and kind of bring it like soften it and just let it kind of spread out and like remold this foundation. Right. And so with Venus and Pisces, we can really dream up, allow ourselves to dream up and just tap into the dream, tap into the fantasy 
the vision of what that feels like, because that is, that's a way to really, um, you know, increase your vibration or to get out of the heaviness of the fault line or what's coming up in your head or in your experience is like really taking time within your day to do something that's pleasurable and meaningful. And so if you take this time, that will drop you into the, into the present moment. And that will actually accelerate the transformation and your, you know, your vibrational frequency that will elevate that. And so, um, yeah, I think that that's a really nice way to, um, just be able to, get out of the energy that you might be feeling right now if it's overwhelming. And again, with that Mars, it, it definitely Mars is probably feeling overwhelmed, restless and ungrounded kind of energy with all of this changing energy. And so we just want to take a moment and really extend ourselves to that Venus and Pisces energy and just indulge in some pleasure, even if for a second. Um, oh, hey, I thought I locked the door. <laughs> All right. So I should be wrapping this up, even though I'm coming up to the full moon in Leo. Oh, I thought those were cries. I was like, what is happening? All right. So where I was with the full moon, full moon on Sunday, and this is like pretty much what the energy is building up to. And, you know, I kind of just briefly... <laughs> made the sun square Uranus seem like it was no big deal, but it definitely is a big deal. Um, with that sun in Aquarius and squaring Uranus, I think I, I did say, no, I didn't say again, it's it's that point of, you know, a um, reaching your, your limit, your capacity, your edge, right? It's a square. So there's a lot of dynamic energy. And I was listening to Rick Levine's, you know, breakdown of this. And he was like, there's just a lot of tension in the air. And essentially we're all, we know we're, we're in this storm or we're coming into the storm and there's, it's essentially like a lightning storm. Right. And we're waiting for the lightning to strike. So are we just going to stand there and like, hope that it doesn't like strike us? Or are we going to, you know, be the lightning or be the change, um, or basically work with this energy. And so Uranus is really desiring to break free to liberate the system or to liberate the limitations. And again, with that sun intention, that sun in Aquarius of that divine intelligence, we are, or at this point, it's like wanting to, there's a desire or intention to liberate our mind to break free of this fixed consciousness so that we can expand so that we connect can connect with divine intelligence or that divine visionary aspect of you know the sun in aquarius and so there's a lot of tension this week and that tension kind of builds and there might be a little bit that is released um on february 3rd but definitely with the full moon, that is definitely a trigger point as we have the sun um, at, what is it? Sorry. Um, at 16 degrees, sun, 16 degrees of Leo. As you can tell, I'm just like not very grounded. So I apologize if, you know, I, I'm, I'm assuming this makes this all is very clear and somewhat organized, but, you know, I'm in my head. Also, um, but yeah, sun at 16 degrees of Leo, moon at 16 degrees of Leo, Uranus at 15 degrees of um, of Taurus. And I will also say on the 3rd of February, actually, this is the day where Uranus finally moves from its station degree point of 14 degrees. So in that window frame, so it's finally like in 15 degrees. And so that's a big deal too. So that already feels like an aha moment, sun squaring Uranus, aha moment shit's coming through. So if you're really been, you know, connecting with spirit, connecting with your guides, your higher self, really setting an intention, doing the work to move forward, that is uh, probably assistance for you. Um, again, it's like, are you going to be the lightning or are you going to let it strike you? Are you going to let the energy dictate where you go or what happens? Or are you going to work and flow with the energy and have and set an intention? 
or set an intention and, and flow with the energy. And what I wrote down here, there's an opportunity to take a leap in frequency to, again, prepare for this dissolving or allow the dissolving of the the belief systems of the limiting beliefs. And then Saturn, you know, Saturn moving into Pisces is really going to hold space or for that, that dissolving of the beliefs so that, you know, Saturn can kind of, you know, get out of its, um, out of its own way in that sense of, um, Saturn moving into Pisces. I, I really have, this sense, especially if you're someone working with the energy, that it's going to kind of loosen up Saturn a bit, um, Saturn's energy and getting the opposite perspective, which is always good, getting, you know, just something different. And so if you, you know, play your cards right, that will really be beneficial because you'll actually have, again, that nourishment, that nourishing water um, to really, you um, heal and just soften up a lot of this energy. And, um, I pulled the ACE of cups this morning. And so I'm really, I keep thinking about that, but yeah, so the sun, I, I don't really talk about the Deccans a lot here. Um, cause it's something that I'm learning and I always have to kind of like, you know, refer back to, I don't have it off memory, but I did note it here because this is really interesting because I did a live talk with um, Spencer Michaud and hope I said his last name right. And we talked about the full moon in Aquarius. And I just happened to look at the Deccans this time. And I was like, oh shoot, this is the same, full, the full moon in Leo is happening in the same place in that same kind of degree range. I think it was 19 degrees, um, back at the full moon of Aquarius back in August of 2022 in the same area, because I remember it was the six of swords and the six of wands that was coming through as far as that, that energy, it was Mercury in, in Aquarius and Jupiter and Leo, right. That we were working with that were in opposition. And that was at, in August of 2022, that was a Leo sun and Aquarius moon. And now on uh, February 5th, we're dealing with an uh, um, Aquarius sun and a Leo moon. And so I thought that was really interesting. So maybe there's something coming up here. There's definitely, again, that aspect of duality coming through, that opposite perspective. Um, there's just something really interesting there. When I noticed that, I was like, ah. Oh my gosh. So there might be some correlation between then and now, especially if there's some limiting belief. I know all of us were really having a time um, and during that full moon in Aquarius, it was like a lot. And guess what also was being activated and triggered at that time? Uranus, Uranus and Taurus was, it was pretty much, it was a closer square than it is now, I believe. Um but this is a pretty close square. I'm talking, we're talking 15 degrees of Uranus <laughs> and then um, 16 degrees of, of the sun and, and the moon. And so there, there's just a very tight energy, again, the tension. And I agree with what Rick Levine said in his talk about, we might, you know, not necessarily feel that release until Monday. Um, but yeah, so the key words, when, when you think about, uh, and I was going to have my tarot cards here and I'm just going to pull them up anyways. Um, cause this video is already kind of long, I'm assuming. So when we're thinking about Mercury and Aquarius in this deck in, we get the six of swords. So this is the sun energy that we are, um, dealing with here, working with. And so it's this energy here and that is movement forward. Maybe not necessarily happy, go lucky, like, yay, um, but definitely movement forward. And this is, you know, within the mind, right? This is dealing with your thoughts, the mental um, spectrum, you know, just ways of communicating energy exchange, information exchange, but maybe there's something that is exchanged, especially with Venus square Mars the day before, maybe there's an interaction with someone else. Maybe it's been all week and it's like, okay, I need to move on. I need to move forward. And this could literally be with like two 
frat or like two opposite sides of your own mind, right? Of your own self, like fragmented, fragmented parts of you that are just like, okay, it's like, I finally need to like, let go of this so that I can come into a space of peace and in wholeness, right? So that is that. So that is, that's where the sun is. And so the keyword that came through for me was movement forward. Um, and then next we have the sun. And this is like one of my favorite cards of tarot because just because of the um, vibe of this card, um, the message, and that's what I said, six of wands and watch is probably going to be like the last card here. <laughs> Like, really? All right. Oh my goodness. Third to last. All right. So six of wands. And that is, yes, well done. Very good. Success. Praise. Recognition. And when I was talking about this with Spencer, it was definitely like, you know, yay, you did it, but there's still more work to do. And I still feel that. That's still very... um relevant. And so maybe you have overcome whatever was coming up, you know, in August of 2022, coming back around now, you finally, you know, have some success, but there's still work to do. So don't be worried if, you know, some things come up again, like it's totally okay. Like that's life, right? We're always, again, I'll post down below the video that I recorded a while, like years ago, dealing, um, talking about the spiral of life, because, you know, we might come back to this from a whole new perspective because life is great like that. Um, and so where Uranus is, is in, um, we have moon and Taurus, which moon and Taurus is exalted, really nice. And we have the six of pentacles, right? And so this is accepting help to restore balance is the key phrase that I um, noted for that. And so um, again, coming back to that prayer energy, again, coming back to Venus, um, which really makes sense, which can be very helpful. And this is like Uranus is really you know, it's not trying to be the bad guy here. It's just trying to help us to restore balance within our resources, within our finances, within our, our self-worth, um, self-reliance and all of that, right? And again, you know, here's the scales right here. So definitely feeling Venus's energy. So I was like, okay, like we have all of this, like 666, like that. And then I thought about it and I was like, okay, but you know, I'm feeling into this vibe of wholeness, of coming full circle, of completion, which one are we missing? What's what's the other fixed sign? And it's my my love, Scorpio. Um, and it's the card that has been haunting me for so long. So maybe we need to like insert this into our perspective, into our experience right now. And that is the Six of Cups. And whenever I see this card, this is innocence. This is emotional fulfillment. This is essentially Sun and Scorpio. And so bringing a bit of that light, a bit of that warmth to Scorpio's energy. And, you know, those of you familiar with Scorpio, it could, there's a lot, right? There's a lot of, with Scorpio's energy where it's like fixed emotions, right? A lot of the emotions, the experiences that we hold within the memory cells of our body, bringing some warmth to, again, that to your body, right? To your internal system and to your you know, energetic feel, like as a feeling to warm that energy, to get things moving, to just like, again, nourish the dryness of this fault line. Um, and so I just really, and then even with the child here, I just really thought of like innocence and just, just unconditional love. So we need more of that. Um, so that's what's coming through for the Leo full moon. And we will see what transpires um, at the coming next week or, you know, the following week. So, but this is definitely, I feel if you're working in flow with the energy, um, you're being very, very present. You're not suppressing, you're not trying to distract, although it's good to distract sometimes if you're just going and going and going. Um, but be mindful of what you're distracting yourself with, like doing something that's fun, like playing with a child, playing with an animal companion, or, you know, drawing, singing, playing music, whatever comes forth, cooking, um, just doing something, distracting yourself with something that's really good and, and high vibrational is key. 
Um, but yeah, so I hope this was helpful. Thank you all of you for your support. Thank you. If you made it to this, this far, you watched the whole video of, um, me talking and almost all over the place I feel, but thank you so much, everyone. Um, happy full moon. I would say I would hope to check in, but this is a busy weekend for me just in general. And then with this energy, I'm like, whoa, a lot going on. Um, but I wish you a happy full moon and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.